Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to make a lead blink using a Raspberry Pi. Now I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4B here, and this is the, the 4 gig model. I mean, it doesn't matter how many gigs of RAM it has, that doesn't have anything to do with making a lead blink. Um, any of them, I think, yeah, any any of the recent Pis except the Pi Zero is is, is basically going to have the same pinout. And you, we, we can also, you can just check the chart to see the pinout on that. So you should be able to do this with any of the Pis. But um, any, any of the recent uh, full-size pies will have the same pinout, so you can basically copy what I did here rather than look it up yourself. But um, I'm going to show you the code to make this this happen, and I'm also going to show you how I'm going to you know talk about how this is um, wired up. So um, first, I'm going to talk about this a little, little bit. Then I'm going to show you the I'm going to cut away to the code. Then I'm going to come back and look at it again. So. Um, to, to start out here, let's let's uh, talk about where this is connected to. So um, I guess first off, the only thing I have on this Pi right now is I have power going into it. This is just the power adapter and it has a little switch to turn it on and off, um, which is more convenient than plugging and unplugging it. Um, now I have these two little, I, I have two uh, cables connected to the, the GPIO pins and um, so I'm actually logged into this Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi. So I SSH'd into it over Wi-Fi. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. Just ch check the, the other videos on my channel. I have, um, I've re I've recently uh, posted an another video on that. Either that or I'm posting this one just before I post that one. But just go check and take a look if you want to see how to SSH into a Raspberry Pi and how to find your Pi on the network. But um, in this video, um, so basically... We have this green cable coming from, the green cable is coming from pin six, and the purple cable is coming from pin, um, it's coming from pin eight. Now pin six is, um, is just, is, is ground, and pin eight is, um, is an actual signal pin. So we, we can have it send whatever we want. So it sends 3.3 volts. And um, it's it's basically um, you know it's configurable. So um, let's let's take a look just to get a, a look at this. Now the, the 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 pins are not actually labeled here. So um, and I don't believe they're labeled on the back either. Or are they? No, no, they're not. Are right. anyways. Um, yeah, if you, if you want to see the pins, you can just look up a chart. If you check the link in the description, I ha should have a chart posted on my site also. Um, so I'll have a link in the description, one to my write-up on this on my site, and another one will be an affiliate link to where you can pick this up on Amazon or somewhere else. And, um, yeah, so anyways, th this, this, this green cable coming from pin six is ground. Purple cable is a 3.3 volt signal. And it's it's just alternating on and off every once every second. So it's off one second, on one second. Now, um, if you, if you see that the, the components are on a breadboard, so I didn't have to actually solder them together because we're just using this to test this out. I wouldn't want to make this a permanent circuit. So basically, ground is connected first to the resistor, and it goes to from this resistor. It goes into the uh, negative pin on this uh, lead, then from the on the positive pin on the lead, it goes out on this purple cable over to the signal. Now, um, it doesn't matter the resistor. You, you could actually turn this resistor around. So this pin could go on this side. You could flip it around. It still provides the same amount of resistance. It makes no difference whatsoever. You, you could swap the, the pins on that around and it's completely fine. Now the lead, however, has to be in the right. Um, the lead, you can't switch the pins around. Like if you pull this out, um, see the longer pin on this and uh look looks like my camera does not want to focus uh, apologies for that um let, let's just focus in on this a little bit and i apologize for the lighting as well all right so the longer pin is positive the shorter pin is negative now if we were to, we were to flip this around and put the negative pin going to our with the positive pin going to ground and the negative pin to uh, our signal, it, it just doesn't light up at all. Um, so turn it this way. So this one, the polarity does matter for, for our lead. Um, longer pin is positive, just remember that. And um, let's see, so the resistor has no polarity, it doesn't care. 
And this is, uh, now we, we could actually, in this circuit, we could have put the resistor, we could put the resistor first and then the lead, or we could put the lead first and then the resistor. It doesn't matter. The purpose of the resistor is just to provide some resistance on the circuit so it doesn't just pull too much current through the entire circuit. So it limits the current on the circuit so that we won't burn out that lead. Um, if you just put the lead on here without the resistor, it's just going to pull way too much current and it's just going to burn the lead out and potentially even burn out our our, our pins on the, the Raspberry Pi also. Supposedly, I have not tried that and I'm not going to try it. Um, so anyways, uh, so the resistor is essential, but it doesn't matter where it goes. It just provides um, resistance in the circuit so it doesn't pull too much power. So um, this, this resistor is actually a 220 ohm resistor. And um, I think we all we needed, we, we only needed 80 ohms of resistance for this to be safe. If you go any less than 80 ohms, you're overworking the, the lead and you, you could potentially damage it or it just isn't good for it. Um, but 80 ohms is the target amount that we would want to shoot for. That's, that's I, I guess, um, the most that we, we should run through it. Um, or, or we should at least limit it by 80 ohms or more. Now we're, we're limiting it by 220 ohms, which isn't a whole lot. It's, it's close. It's not that close, um, but it's uh, it's um, it's close enough that the lead still lights up. You know, the, the more ohms the resistor has, the more resistance it provides, and the, the fainter the lead will be. So if we got closer to 80 ohms, it'll be a little bit brighter, but not by much. I mean, it's not a huge difference. Um, Anyways, so you can see, let me see if I can actually look, look at this lead and the, I apologize about the lighting. Yeah, that, that is terrible lighting, but, um, yeah, my camera is not picking this up that well, but, uh, those first two bands are red and that followed by a black band, a black band and a brown band. And, uh, just cause of the lighting in the room right now, it's really hard to tell that. And I really should have brought a separate light in here instead of relying on just the lights in the room. But, um, in, in any case, I'll probably, if you check the link in the description, I'll probably put a chart for, for um, if you, it'll bring you to my page and I'll probably have a chart for resistors on there anyways, or a link to, to a chart. And I'll probably have a separate picture of this resistor, just that, that, that comes out a whole lot better than it does in this video. But in any case, um, just make sure you have at least the amount of ohms that you need and, um, and not, not, you know, the more, if you go way too much, it'll barely, uh, like, like, I think if you were to get up towards like, uh, 10,000 ohms, you, you wouldn't even be, barely be able to tell that it's lighting up. Whereas like a thousand ohms, I forget if that's amount, I haven't, I haven't tried increasing the ohms all that much, but at a certain amount, it basically won't light up or won't, you won't be able to tell in any case. Um, so that's about, um, let, let me see if I have anything. Oh yeah. So the, the one other thing I should talk about is the breadboard. Um, if you're looking at a video on how to light up a lead, there's a good chance. Maybe you don't know how breadboard board works or maybe you do, but, um, in any case, basically the breadboard is for connecting components together. And you see this, these rows on the bottom, um, go horizontally, right? And, um, so you'll have one that's associated with uh, the the blue line here and one that's associated with the red line. And then over here, you'll have another one, same thing on this side. So these go horizontally, these two rows go horizontally, and these go horizontally. Whereas the rows in the middle here, these all go vertically like that. So I guess you'll call them columns, depending on how you orient the board, right? Now, um, basically anything in the same column or the same row would be connected together. So you could plug something into this first row here and plug it in way over here, it's gonna get connected. So basically, if you look at it, and I'll probably try to put a diagram for, for how this works, but th this uh, this thing here um, is in the same column as this pin here. So these two are connected together. And um, you know this one and the, the first pin on this uh, lead are in the same column, so they're connected together. And the next pin on the lead is in the same column as this pin, as uh, this jumper cable here. So those are connected together. So you can kind of see how those are connected together. And I'm going to put some diagrams, and I'm, I'm going to take a picture of this and have it labeled, so you can, it, it, so you can tell exactly how that works. But um, just check the link in the description. 
And um, so I think that's about it for now. I'm gonna switch over and look at the code. Then we're gonna make some tweaks to the code and then we're gonna switch back to this, to, to looking at the pie again. So we're, we're actually gonna change the code so that this light blinks faster. So notice now it's blinking, blinking relatively slowly. It's on one second, off one second. We're gonna change that to a 10th of a second. All right, so let's take a look here. Um, I'm logged into my Raspberry Pi um, in this putty console. Now, um, typically I'm, I'm gonna be connecting to it. Um, I mean, no, normally I'm using Linux, so I would log into things. Uh, I'm, I'm normally running Linux on the desktop, so I just log in using console or, or GNOME terminal or something. But today I'm, I'm using Windows, and uh, you know, so, some days I'm also on, on, on a Mac, but today today it's Windows, and, t and on, on Windows the the uh, tool to connect with SSH or the standard most common tool people use is called Putty. And um, I'm our, I have another video where I show how, how to download and install Putty and how to use this. But um, in this video, I'm already logged into my Pi. And you'll notice I'm running python blink.py and blink.py is the script that causes the lead to blink. <clears throat> so it's running now and um, let's see. I'm gonna just maximize this window and I'm gonna hit Control C. And um, I'm not sure if I, I'm actually not sure if Putty allows me to zoom in a little bit. I, have, I haven't used it enough. And it doesn't look like it's letting me zoom in. So if, if you want the code, so you, depending on whether you're watching me on a PC or, or on, a, on your phone, it, it may or may not be difficult to, to see the, the code for this. But anyways, um, if you want the code, you, you can you can uh, check the link in the description. I'm gonna have it posted there also. But um, here I'm gonna vi the, the file blink.py. And um, you, you, you could do this on your desktop and copy up to the Raspberry Pi if you want, or you could run, you could connect to the Raspberry Pi with a keyboard and monitor, or you could connect with VNC and use a graphical environment to edit this if you don't like using VI. Um, I do like using VI, so I, I just log in with SSH on the command line <coughs> and edit the code with VI. So um, <coughs> if, if you look up here, what, we're, um, what it does is we import some libraries. We, we import the Raspberry Pi GPIO library and we import time so that we can we import sleep from time so that we can we can sleep and so that we can access the GPIO pins. Um, th this first thing we do right here is set warnings to false so that we're gonna just ignore warnings for the time being. And then we uh, f use physical pin numbering. Um, so we basically just set the mode to GPIO board. And I guess that uses physical pin numbering so that we can specify the pin numbers instead of names. I, I believe that's what that does, but I'm not completely familiar with this API call. So um, after that, this next line right here, gpio.setup. Now what, what this does is it sets pin eight as an output and <clears throat> it initializes it to low or off. So low is off, high is on. So it's gonna be initialized to off. So when the script starts, it's gonna, the, the lead is not gonna be blinking. And um, I mean, at the very beginning, it just initializes it to that, but then, you know, a fraction of a second later, this, uh, it starts this loop and starts it blinking. So um, it, this is a, an infinite loop. We just say while true. So while the condition is true, it keeps going. And we just put the, the word true here. So it's always true. So until you hit control C and just kill this, pro, this script, it's just gonna run forever. And <clears throat> what it does is uh, the, the first thing it does is calls G, it, it, from GPIO, it calls output and it, it sets, um, and, it, and it does that for pin um, eight and it sets GPIO high. So it's basically setting um, pin eight to high which, or on. So it's basically turning pin eight on and then you sleep for one second so it stays on. Basically your, your lead is connected to, our, our lead is connected to pin eight. So it's gonna turn, turn our lead on and then it's gonna sleep for one second. And then we're, we're gonna say GPIO output pin eight, but instead of high, we're gonna say GPIO low, which turns it low or off. So it's gonna turn our lead off because our, our, and then it's going to sleep for one second. And then it comes back to the beginning of the loop 
and it turns it on, sleeps for a second, off, sleeps for a second, on, sleeps for a second, and so on and so on forever. So that causes our lead to blink. Now, um, we're gonna change this just a little bit. Um, we are going to, instead of a one, instead of one second, we're gonna say 0, 0 0.01 seconds. And we're gonna go down here, 0 0.01, escape, and we're gonna run this. Uh, we're gonna save the file, and we're gonna run the script again. So we, we, we just, um, say python in blink.py and so we're going to use python to run our script and now it is running so i'm going to cut away from the code here and switch the video back to our breadboard and our raspberry pi so we can observe the the uh the lead blinking and um actually one second here i just glanced over it at it before i cut away I just I just made a quick mistake let me fix this really quick um, instead of a one that's a hundredth of a second which we won't even be able to see like you look at the blink and it's that you look at you look at the lead and it's solid it, it's blinking but it's blinking so fast it just looks solid we're gonna remove this this zero here so instead of a hundredth of a second it's a tenth of a second that's really what I was going for so we're gonna set it for 0.1 seconds uh, and that's still going to be blinking quite a bit faster. So we're going to we're going to save that, launch our script again. So now our script is running, and it's a tenth of a, every tenth of a second it blinks. So it's tenth on, tenth off. So now I'm going to cut away and uh, show you our our lead and our Raspberry Pi. All right. So here we are back at the Raspberry Pi after changing the code to make it, so now it blinks instead of every second, it's every uh, it's every tenth of a second um, or every 0.1 seconds. So um, <clears throat> see how fast that's blinking? Now imagine if we, we made that a um, hundredth of a second, you wouldn't even be able to, I mean, you would think it would be like a quick flicker, but it's not, it's just solid. Or, or maybe it's just my eyes, but um, Anyways, there there we go. That's so we, we updated we took a look at the code went over all the code and then we uh, modified the code to make it uh, blink a little bit faster and um, That's it. That's about everything I have to show you today. So um, if, if you're if you found this video interesting, give me a thumbs up if you uh, If you have any comments or questions uh, criticism anything you want to let me know just leave a comment down below and um, what, what else? Uh, definitely subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Subscribe because we have a lot, lot more. I have a lot more videos planned. This is just one of the more basic videos, and we're, we're going to be doing. We are going to be doing more simple stuff like this, but we're also going to be doing more complicated stuff. We're going to be like um, driving um, LED displays. We're going to be uh, driving like uh, servo motors. Um, eventually, like building robots and stuff. We're going to play around with all kinds of sensors and stuff. But I'm going to I'm going to come up with like uh, basically every t every video I can possibly think of. A anything we might want to do, any project. Um, I'm I'm going to try to do it. One of the things I'm going to be going over. Um, either before this video, I'm not sure which order I'm posting the videos in. We're going to be trying out the uh, Raspberry Pi camera Noir. So this is an IR camera. It has no IR filter. So with a with an IR light source, you can basically see in the dark. Um, so it's dark except for the IR light. But in, anyways, we we have things like that coming up. Um, and we, we also have a lot of non Raspberry Pi related stuff, just code servers and anything else you could think of, just a lot of tech stuff. So um, definitely stay tuned for all that stuff. So we're doing more electronics, more servers, more code, more of all of this stuff. So um, and we're and we're gonna we're gonna eventually break out into networking. Um, crypt, we're doing a little bit of cryptocurrencies. We're gonna be doing more. We're we're also gonna break out into three D printing. So um, and I. Am planning on picking up a 3D printer and starting a whole new section of my site and my channel on 3D printing because I think it goes together really well with my electronics projects, and um, it, it's just just it's something that couples well together with it. Like it can build, you know, like cases and parts and tools that go together with um, different electronics projects and and different Raspberry Pi based things. So. 
um, definitely stay tuned for all of that. You know, hit the subscribe button. Um, and if you, uh, if you want, if you want to see when my, uh, just, just hit the little bell icon and you'll see when I post a new video, it'll just give you an alert when I post a new video. And, um, as always, hopefully you enjoyed watching this and, um, that that's it for today.